Hey, this is Mr. Love here. This is the uh, video solution to homework number 211. Um, this deals with work and energy. Okay, so the, uh, the first problem asks how much work is needed to lift an object that weighs 200 newtons, a height of 4 meters. Um, work is simply force times distance. So in order to find the work, you multiply 200 newtons times the distance, which is 4 meters. Okay, um, and that gives you an answer of 800 newton meters or joules if uh, if you know that unit number two how much power is needed to lift the 200 newton object to a height of four meters in four seconds um, the power equation says that power is force times distance which is work over time so uh, making a, a few substitutions um, the force is 200 newtons the distance is four meters and the time that's done in is four seconds okay um, a little trick here these fours actually can cancel out um, so you're left with the power is equal to 200 newton meter per second where that's joules per second or that's equivalent to a watt um, number three, what is the power output of an engine that does 60,000 joules of work in 10 seconds? Um, again, power is equal to work divided by time. Um, so simple substitution gives you the, uh, the equation 60,000 joules divided by 10 seconds. Okay, so the power equals 6,000 joules per second or 6,000 watts okay moving on um, okay this is a mechanical advantage problem what is the mechanical advantage of the incline uh, mechanical advantage um, is simply input force over output force so you're inputting six meters worth of work and the output is three meters so the advantage is two or two to one as we say so the mechanical advantage of the incline is two to one. Um, so if the advantage is two to one, and it takes 500 newtons to lift it straight up, um, that means it would take exactly half of, <clears throat> of that same force to push it up this incline. So half of 500 newtons is 250 newtons. <clears throat> you could also solve this problem by finding the potential energy up here, uh, which is equal to mass times gravity times height, um, and then uh, using the force distance equation um, and setting it equal to the potential energy. That would also be a valid solution. Um, number five, all of the ramps in this, uh, this these pictures are five meters high. So we know that the kinetic energy of the block at the bottom of the ramp will be equal to the loss of potential energy. Of course, that's conservation of energy. Find the speed of the block at ground level in each case. Um, the way to do that um, for the first one in particular is using the, uh, the distance acceleration equation in order to, um, to solve how long it would take to hit the ground and then the speed at which it hits the ground. So the, uh, the distance acceleration equation is d equals one half g t squared you can solve that for t okay and t ends up being the square root of 2 d over g um, if you plug these in with d being five meters you get t is equal to one second and if you remember all the way back the velocity is equal to the acceleration which is gravity times time so gravity is 10 meters per second per second. Time is one second. You get the velocity is 10 meters per second. Okay, the key to this problem is um, here it's 10 meters per second. Each of these cases is exactly 10 meters per second. That's because all of this potential energy, as was it up top, is converted to kinetic energy at the bottom no, no matter how long it takes to get down there. Okay, so whatever the path is, it doesn't matter all of these potential energies are equal so that means and it must mean that these kinetic energies are all equal as well as the block moves down to the bottom okay we'll finish up the second half in a second